OK, folks, thank you. So, any... Um, go back to the conversation... Uh, go back to one of the things we talked about this morning, OK? One of the prime things you want to do, even though it feels um, unpredictable, it's not unpredictable, OK? It's completely predictable why you have a metaphobia, and it's completely predictable how you get over a metaphobia. You just need to know how to do it. OK? There's, not, there's nothing magical about it. There's nothing that you can't possibly learn. There's not some secret thing that's happening to make yours different than somebody else's, OK? It's utterly predictable. A series of these thinking styles and these beliefs, and maybe some other beliefs that you're holding about yourself that are, that are prompting and creating this, OK? There's something you are doing that's creating it. If you use the techniques that are in the program to find what it is you're creating it and stop it, it will stop. Or if you use the techniques in the program to get yourself to the point where you're thriving, you won't have it in the first place. Okay? So try not to look confused when you ask questions, because it's not actually confusing. The answer is in there. You just haven't found it yet. But nothing... We never do anything... <laughs> we never add anything else into it that's not in that book. There's nothing else that you don't know. We might embellish some of the things there, might make some of the things clearer in there, but there's nothing else than what is in that book. There's no secret other ingredient that we leave out of the book that's extra special. Okay? Everything you need to know is in that book to cure yourself from metaphobia and get yourself thriving. There's nothing else you need to know. Okay? So if, if you're not quite there yet, there's something either that you're not understanding or there's something that you're missing or there's a belief or a series of beliefs that you haven't particularly worked on yet. You can come here, Liz. There's something that, that hasn't been challenged yet or something you're not doing. Does that make sense? Okay. So what you don't want to do, you don't want to think about it in an unpredictable way. It's really unhelpful for you. You don't want to go, oh, do you know what, Rob? I don't know what's going on for me. You do know what's going on for you. It's in that fucking book. I wrote that book about you. Everything you need to know is in that book. Okay. If you did everything that's in that book, the way it's laid out in the book, you will be thriving and you will not have a metaphobia. Okay. So if you think you've done everything in the book and yet you've got a metaphobia, you haven't done everything that's in the book. Okay, so what I could set you is a little challenge. Okay, let's set you a little challenge. Those of you that think that perhaps there is something potentially unique to your individual set of circumstances that cause your problems, I'll make you a bet. I'll bet you a thousand pounds that everything you knows that you need to know is in the book. Okay, so if you get to the point where you think you've done everything that's in the book, okay, and you've still got a metaphobia, you can come and see me for a session which will be free. And if we cure you and it turns out it was in the book all along, that'll be a thousand pounds you owe me, okay? <laughs> if we cure you and it was something that wasn't in the book, I'll give you a thousand pounds, okay? It's a genuine offer. It's a genuine offer to all of you. So think really fucking carefully <laughs> before you phone me up and say, Rob, can I have that session? Genuine offer, I'll, I'll stick to it, okay? If, if, if you come to me and we have a session and it transpires, you have actually really got the book and put it into practice, you're not better. Whether you get cured or not, I'll give you a £1,000 there and then on the spot. A okay, genuine offer. Not a joke. Completely genuine offer. Okay? But think very carefully before you phone me up. Because your sense of learned helplessness is what leads you to think that I'm doing everything. Oh, Rob, I've been slogging my guts out. I'm doing everything. That may well be true. But don't be misled by that into thinking that you're doing everything that's in the programme, everything that's in the book. You almost certainly aren't, OK? Because everything you need to know is in there. Yours isn't different to anyone else's. You might have different levels, you know. You might be one of those people that didn't have particularly high disgust propensity, but you were really obsessive. Or you might be not that obsessive, but you had really strong black and white thinking, a huge fear of being out of control. It may have been your fear of being out of control more than anything, that led you to develop the phobia. But it's still the same things that are in there. There's no other 15th secret thinking style that you've got that nobody else has got. Okay? You want to make it predictable. I don't mean that in a critical way. I mean that you're, you, are, uh, um, you are propagating a sense of powerlessness by thinking that there's something I don't know. There's something I just don't know. There's something I'm not getting. Okay? That's unhelpful to you to think that way. Think to yourself, instead think, everything I need to know is in there, okay? If I'm not completely cured yet, I'm not completely thriving yet, then there's something I'm not getting. Instead of feeling powerless, I'm just going to go back through it again. 
I'm dot the I's and cross the T's and I go for everything. I'm gonna read it in a different way and I look at it from a different angle. I'm gonna watch some of the videos that I've put online for you. I listen to Mary's audios. If you've got 100 years, you have to <laughs> listen through. Okay, and go onto the support tab, the MetaFave web. There's loads of stuff on there. If you know everything that's in there and, you, and you've done it thoroughly, you will not have a metaphobia and you will be thriving. Okay? If you think that's the case and you're not, then please come and see me, but do bring your checkbook. <laughs> Any questions about that? It's a genuine, genuine offer. Okay? I say offer. Slightly loaded in my favour. No. <laughs> not from you. My mum told me about people like you. <laughs> right. Uh, any questions before we move on to the last bit? Can we have a round of applause for Claire then, please? Thank you very much. Okay. So, yeah. um, like uh, with Mary and Layla, can you, I know you've done a video already, but can you just talk for 10 minutes about specifically what you did to overcome it. Yep, I can. Um, the most important thing that I really want to communicate to you all is that I'm no different from you and you're no different from me. I had a metaphobia. It was really debilitating. I know what you're going through. So it, it, it's, it's really kind of simple to go through this book and cure yourself of a metaphobia. Um, you just, you just do what it says on the tin. You, you follow it. You, do, you know what Rob's been saying, what everybody's been saying all day. I, um, I picked it up first time and read it, and it was that kind of um, perfectionist. I intellectualised it. I thought, oh, I understand that. That's brilliant. I know what I'm doing now. Put it away in a drawer. Felt a little, better, a little bit better for a few weeks and then realised that actually nothing had changed. So I had to come back to it, and I had to come back to it with a completely different belief that actually I could do it, and I, I could do it really well. I just had to do it properly. So like I was saying earlier, every day I completed the actions, I completed the exercises, I, um, I processed the positives, not just kind of a little bit. I, and, and like you, it was really difficult to begin with. I couldn't think of 10 things that I could say about myself that, that were positive. Now I've got about 20 things on my list. Because <laughs> it just it, it rolls on and it gets easier and easier. The more you get in the habit of being kinder to yourself, being compassionate to yourself, being nicer to yourself, the more that habit becomes normal. And it doesn't feel alien anymore to do that. Um, the locus of control, I, was, I scored 25 when I did it initially. It, it's zero now because I went back and I challenged all of those things. I didn't just go, oh, well, you know, maybe I could kind of get my head around some of them. I really challenged them. I made myself look at each one individually, and I went out and I did things that would challenge what those beliefs were. Um, my... my um, Give me a, a locus of control quiz uh, thing. I believe you cannot make someone fall in love with you. <laughs> <laughs> um, if it's right, it will happen. How do you know that's not true? Um, I know that's not true because I have examples of that in, in every kind of walk of life. You, there's, there's no kind of... I don't believe in soulmates. And if, if you're... Well, especially the bloke, if you're nice to them, they're going to fall in love with you anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Buy them a few drinks, cook them a nice meal. Um, but, it, yeah, I, I, yeah. It's good enough. It's pretty accurate. <laughs> I think the thing I, I really feel really sort of passionate about Thrive is that I tried, I tried so many different treatments. I, I could write a book just on the treatments I tried. Um, that desire for control, that perfectionism. I wanted to fix it. I understood I was doing it to myself and I wanted to fix it. Um, I'm a therapist, I've been a therapist for 10 years. I fixed people but I couldn't fix me um, because I couldn't fix the emetophobia. I didn't have that handle on it. I didn't understand what I was doing to create it. Um, and this told me exactly what I was doing. And like the, the Lego bricks, I broke it down bit by bit 
I kind of thought of it as a, a rucksack of bricks on my back. So I kind of carried on doing everything that I needed to do in a day, but I did it with a really heavy, anxious weight on my back. And each time I kind of got a handle on my, my beliefs, my thinking styles, my locus of control, another brick came out, and another brick came out, and another brick came out. And suddenly I wanted to kind of start doing things again. And, and I didn't need to, need to really think about it anymore because my beliefs had changed. That, that fundamental kind of grounding had changed. <coughs> So it wasn't a case of firefighting anymore. I didn't have to you know, battle to keep my stressometer down in order to go and do something. <coughs> I didn't need to battle it anymore. It just wasn't there. Um, you know, it, it's also, a lot of you have seen me walk about with a cane today. I, I'm visually impaired. I haven't got very much sight. And it was kind of very easy to, to become quite reclusive because of that. But the impact of, of Thrive, isn't about curing emetophobia. It's like Rob said earlier, it's about thriving. I, I'm ready for any challenge any day of the week now. Life is kind of one big adventure and, and bring it on, you know, whatever, whatever I need to do and whatever I want to do. There's no kind of saying no to it anymore. Whereas before it was always, oh no, I can't do that, no, I can't do that. It, it enables you, forget the emetophobia, that's irrelevant. Once you're thriving, it, it just doesn't exist anymore. This doesn't exist anymore. Lovely. Any questions, Claire? How long did it take? How long did it take? So I'm just um, repeat it How long did it take? I initially bought the book and read it, and then put it away, and then I got it back out again, started again, um, and had two sessions with the lovely Lucy, um, and it took me four weeks once I was actually doing it properly because I hadn't, like you, I hadn't processed the positives, I hadn't challenge myself on anything and it was the perfectionism that was the bit that Lucy kind of really Claire, highlighted for me so for this, just for the sake of argument there will be ladies in here today and possibly men in here today that are going to be sitting there thinking well she couldn't have had it as bad as I had it then I've only took her four weeks and I understand how you did in four weeks and I'm really happy for you but yours couldn't have been bad as mine how bad was it? I'm 46 so to a few months ago it was completely debilitating completely debilitating it it I thought about it a thousand times a day it it was always there that everything from an uneasy kind of apprehension with everything I needed to do to full-blown terror depending on where my self-esteem was so there was peaks and troughs in life but my god you know I starved myself so I had nothing in my stomach I I wouldn't go anywhere I wouldn't do you know you know all the avoidance things that we do or did do um so I, I'm no different to to you which means you're no different to me and all it takes is complete perseverance just do it do it to the letter don't miss bits out don't think oh, I don't need that bit I know that bit that bit's no good that doesn't apply to me every single paragraph in here applies to you and if you follow it you'll get there you will. <laughs> a question, Angela. Did, did you feel you needed the, um, the extra help? Did you feel that the book wasn't enough and that you did need an extra bit of help? To be honest, by the time I contacted Lucy, I'd, I'd kind of got back, back into doing it again. So by that point, I, w I was starting to, to really complete the book as it should be done. So then Lucy really helped me to consolidate what I was learning from the book. So maybe if I'd have taken it for a little bit longer, but I, I was really on a roll with it and I really wanted to, to, um, to get that sort of support. And I think to have somebody, when you're a perfectionist and when you've got all of these kind of things going on, all of these Lego bricks going on, to have somebody to actually challenge you on those things and really challenge you on, on those beliefs and challenge you on, on your external locus and, you know, do you really believe that? Has that belief changed or are you just kind of, mm, so it, it really helped me, really helped me. I don't think it's essential, but I think it can be really helpful, yeah. Did the 
I was talking to Stephen earlier on in the toilet, as men do, not in the <laughs> same. I said the toilet, I don't mean in the cubicle. <laughs> and uh, uh, he's in the same situation, so he got himself almost over it a little while back, and then, because he felt so confident and happy, he took on loads, loads more work and did loads and loads yeah. of other stuff. And, uh, you know, you, you've got to get yourself to the point where you are thriving, not just better, mm. not coping. Coping's no good. No. If you're still coping, if you're still having thoughts that you've got to fight, that's not thriving. That's more or less over your metaphobia and well done, but actually, when you're at that point, you're still having thoughts. You do run the risk if you're not careful of going back down here again, yeah. because you're still having pro metaphobia thoughts. So when you get to the point where you just don't have those thoughts anymore, mm -hmm. that's when you're cured. And you almost become more despondent, and you think, oh, I've cracked it, and then you go back down again. Yes, yes, certainly. And don't forget, when I saw Lisa, I saw her at least six, seven times, maybe more over a period of a year. Yeah. But you've got to put in six or seven weeks, normally, solid effort every day. Even if, even if after one week you're feeling much, much better, you don't stop. No. It's not habitual after a week. And it's backing it up with those challenges. You've got That's to challenge yourself to, to go out and push your comfort yeah. zones. Yeah. Um, you know, it's really, really important. It's yeah. a big part of, of the programme. Yeah. Because otherwise you don't you don't know whether you, you can do, those, do those things. Sorry, when, when you do those challenges initially, do you still get that sort of feeling of not doing what you need to do? I think yeah, while you're still working through the program, yeah. yeah. You, it, for me, something as a perfectionist that I, I struggled with was tolerating anything that wasn't kind of the yeah. best it could possibly be. Yeah. And, and with Lucy's help, I worked out that actually it's okay to tolerate things when they're maybe not, not fantastic, but I can tolerate it, and that's that resilience that you build up. So everything isn't always rosy, no. but I can tolerate it when it's not, which is a huge difference from where I was before. Because if everything wasn't rosy, then oh my god, it was like the worst possible, yeah. possible thing. Um, so that's the difference. It's it's being able to, you know, get through maybe.